Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course SAP Logistics Transformation from SAP ERP to SAP S4 HANA, week number one, unit number three. My name is Maike Hevig and I'm an SAP Transportation Management Expert. In this unit, we will go into the details of the SAP Transportation Management process and learn more about the business objects. So let's start. As you, remember, uh, as you remember from the last session, we have this high level big picture of the SAP transportation management process. And we now go into the details of every single area. The first one is the auto management area. In this area, all is about um, the integration with the S4 HANA core. And for this, I have here one business process, which gives you a high level overview of how the objects work with each other. In TM, we have two different scenarios um, for the integration. It's a little bit different to the Elytra world, where we have only one integration scenario. In TM, we have two. The first one is the sales order based or order based integration. That means you can already integrate your sales order, purchase order, or scheduling agreement, stock transfer order into the SAP transportation management. That means you can already plan long term. This is different to the delivery based integration. Here you can imagine when you create a sales order, you normally have five, six weeks or a little bit less time to really plan. This is quite important, especially in the ocean scenario, where you need to book capacities upfront, like five, six weeks upfront, because otherwise you're not having any, you're not getting any space on a ship. That means here in TM, you have the possibility to do a planning upfront, you have the capabilities to consolidate. And then the best thing is based on the planning, when you, what you can see here on the left side in this um, picture, you can do the planning based on the sales order, and then you can trigger the delivery proposal. The delivery proposal triggers the creation of the inbound or outbound delivery in the S4 core. So the creation is still in the S4 core, but the trigger allows you to create a delivery based on the dates, on the planning dates from SAP Transportation Management. That means you have a much more accurate delivery instead of doing the planning afterwards. This is the big benefit if you're using the sales order integration. We have also the second scenario, which you all know from the Elytra side, where you integrate based on the delivery. Here, you simply do the same, like creating a sales order, or a purchase order, based on this you create, like you know, the inbound delivery or outbound delivery, and then you start the planning process in TM. This is more short-term planning. Um, we call it also execution-driven, so it's more like um, based on the delivery instead of really like uh, long-term planning. This also limits you in the planning capabilities because you're not having so much time for communicating with a carrier or with um, with an ocean shipping line, for example. Um, that means um, this one is the classic one you know from Elytra, but TM gives you more possibilities. We talked the whole time about the embedded version of TM. To give you the full picture about what is also possible with TM, we, I want to show you one slide about the standalone version also. So when a TM is next to an S4 HANA core, not in the core itself, um, the process itself, it's the same. So we have the same objects, all these things, but the only difference is that we have two additional um, business documents in the TM world, the so-called order-based transportation, transportation requirement and the delivery-based transportation requirement, the OTR and DTR, which are replicates of a sales order or delivery in the SAP transportation management. You cannot do anything with the uh, this object just duplicates. That's also the reason why we remove them when we are in an embedded scenario, because we don't need it. We don't need this kind of objects. We can simply work directly on the sales order or the purchase order. For this integration, you need master data in the SAP TM. In the embedded world, it's quite easy because we, you can reuse the one from S4 HANA. You can reuse the plans, the shipping points, the business partners like the customer and vendor or like the, um, like the product materials, you don't have to do anything, except you have to create based on them locations in TM. We work with a transportation network in TM and therefore we need locations, the real addresses of these objects from S4HANA. If you are in an 
standalone um, scenario, so TM is next to your S4HANA core, you have to replicate this data. With the data replication framework, you replicate the information to TM. And also you have to create the locations. If you're an embedded scenario, it's really easy. You don't have to do anything except running one report to create the locations. For the standalone version, you have to do the master, master data replication. Do you use all this kind of master data in your SAP TM system? And this data is also mandatory. You, you need this data to integrate a sales order or delivery to TM. And this is all about the order management part. Let's talk about the planning part, which is really the heart of TM. So all about planning, finding the best um, utilization, best, um, best track, best carrier, all this kind of things. And here we have something special, which you don't know from Elytra, which is the freight unit. This object is something special from TM. And we introduced this object to optimize the planning process, to really find the best utilization of the truck. To go more into this detail, also here, we have the high-level process overview. So you learned in the order management that we have the TRQ, transportation requirement, like a sales order, purchase order. In this example here, you have here on the right, left side, here, um, six handling units, um, which are part based in this delivery. And then you're coming to the planning area and we're creating based on this um, handling units, on this delivery, we create freight units. In this case, case, we create two handling units for each freight unit. So we separate the delivery into smaller pieces. Because a freight unit for us is the smallest units, which is always transported together from A to B at the same dates and times. So it's the package which always stays together and cannot be separated through the process. It could be a handling unit, it could be a delivery, it could be only a USP stick. This is up to your business needs and also um, to what you want to achieve in the planning process. Do you want to optimize till the end or is it not so important for you to have the best utilization? Because if you have smaller units, of course, you can build better tracks together. You can really put things together in the track in the best way. But if you have bigger portions, this is not possible. And this is exactly why we introduced this freight unit, to give our customers the opportunity to really optimize the track till the end. Because in this scenario, we put together two freight units into one truck, so that we have one freight order with four handling units, and we have one freight unit um, on one truck. And maybe you can put another freight unit on top on this. But the delivery is split into three freight units and they planned on two different freight orders. And then at the end, the carrier will pick it up and will, uh, will do the execution or will subcontract it again afterwards. What is important for the freight unit is that you can decide how it looks like at the end, how the freight unit will be created based on the so-called freight unit building rule. The freight unit building rule has some hard constraints like location and dates. So it's always a unit which goes together from A to B, always on the same dates and times. But on POP, you can put into this freight unit building rule incompatibilities or split quantities. So you can say, I always want to separate frozen goods from normal goods. Or you can say after 500 kilograms, I want to split into separate freight units because then I can put them on different tracks to really utilize the tracks in the best way. And also what we have is still called package builder. So you can create packages in the best way that um, goods are packed together uh, based on their handling instruction or packaging instructions. And then afterwards you can decide um, if you want to split into separate freight units or put it all together in one freight unit. I have here now one real life example, which I want to show to you that it's really clear to you how it works. So on the left side, you have the purchase order. Purchase order has a ship to address to a customer 16, and we have two products in this purchase order. One will be delivered on November the 1st, and the second product will be delivered on November the 1st and January first. Now you give this purchase order to TM and the freight unit building will, will run. So the system will check at first the locations. So we are fine. You could put them together on one freight unit. 
but then the system will check the dates and times. And in this case, we have a difference. So schedule line number one from product number one and scheduling nine from number one from product two, they can be delivered together on November the 1st. And the schedule line number two has a different date. So we have to separate this so that we have in the end two freight units. We can plan them together on a track if we want to, and we can change the dates. But here, this one, we would plan for a track normally on the 1st of November. And this one, we plan for another track in January and consolidate together with other freight units to have the best utilization. And how do we do the planning? So this is the most powerful area of TM. We have a lot of different capabilities here. Um, and I try to put all of them in one graphic here. And I want to show you a little bit what is possible. You will learn more about this uh, area in the week number three and unit number one and two, where I show you the transportation cockpit, a real system demonstration about this. But for now, I only want to give you a little bit like a high level overview, what we can do, what we can um, achieve with our capabilities. So in TM, you have the possibility to plan manually. We have a map, we have a gunshot, maybe you have your own fleet and you want to really plan on a gunshot. We have the opportunity to use track and drop. We can use wire insertion, selection, do all the manual planning there. But we have also an optimizer, optimizer in place. So you can use this optimizer engine to optimize your routing, your scheduling, your load consolidation, and also your load planning. So you can decide where to put the packages into the truck at the end. And as a result, out of this planning process, we create freight orders, freight bookings, or transportation units. These objects we will discuss in the next unit because these are objects are our execution documents, which are quite important for the execution integration with warehouse management and also with the carrier communication. Um, and we have also a lot of different um, transactions we have to plan, but the most important one is the transportation cockpit. This cockpit is the most powerful transaction in the TM. I will jump to the next line to show you one example of the cockpit. So you can see it here. And what you can see here is on the left side. So at first, you have everything what you need in this transaction as planner to really work in this transaction without leaving this transaction. You can do your normal work just easily in this transaction. For example, here on the left side, you have the transportation demand. So our freight units. You can see what you need to plan on this day. Then you have on below, you have the resources. So the capacities, capacities which you can use um, for this planning process. And then on the right side, you have the freight orders, freight bookings. So the result documents out of the planning process. And you have a map. So some details, maybe a map, a gunshot. And it's up to you how you design this transportation cockpit based on the needs of your transportation planners. For this, you have to define um, page layouts, for example. Here you can see it below. And what you also need for this planning process is the transportation network, so the master data. We will discuss this in the next few slides, what's about, so what's the, what do you need for a network in TM? And you have to define selection profiles and planning profiles. These profiles define what does a planner plan, so the selection. Maybe you have a planner from US, you have a planner from Europe, and the planner from Europe should only see the demands from Europe, and the guy from US only should see the things from US. And then you define in the planning profile how does the planner plan at the end. So define if you're using optimizer, if you're just doing everything manually, if you're doing a carrier selection on top. So all this kind of thing, configuration is needed to do this planning process um, um, in the transportation management. The plan, um, this planning process, it's so the configuration, also what you need, what you're using, is up to you on your business needs. You can start with simple manual planning, and then move forward to an optimizer planning through your rollout implementation project, SAP transportation management. So start simple and then go more advanced, advanced after time, which is possible with this planning profile, with the settings behind this whole planning process. And as I mentioned, we need this transportation network and this network is 
it's quite important. This is something special, it's TM only master data. So it's only used in TM. And um, I want to go now with you through this business objects that you learn um, what is about. I have later on also in the appendix one slide, which documents what I'm telling you now, so um, that you can read through it and also learn more about this. Now, I only want to give you a little bit like a quick overview about this, that you get a feeling what is needed. So from a general perspective, TM has a very dynamic network. It's different like the one in Elytra, which is more static. We are working with a dynamic network because we want to enable our optimizer to, to, to find the best routes through a network, to define what is the best way going from one customer to another one and uh, enables them to find the best um, way through the whole network. As a first object, we need the locations in TM. So you remember also your customer, also um, Shipping point, they need locations in TM. And that's exactly these, these locations here. Then we have on top some TM only locations like a port or railway station. So the locations you only need for a transport planning process. So you don't need it in, um, in S4 HANA core, like in SD MM modules, you only need it in TM. Then we have also so-called transshipment locations mainly like distribution centers, like hubs. They are used for consolidation and deconsolidation for a whole planning process so that you can really repack something or put together goods on another truck to have a good utilization through the whole transportation planning process. And somehow we have to link this location. So we have to, we have to tell the optimizer or the, the planning process um, the ways, the different ways. And you can imagine if you would link every location with each other, it would be a big maintenance topic. And therefore we created transportation zones, zones grouping together locations to a certain area. Like here in this example, we have Germany, we have the Netherlands, we have Great Britain, and we are linking them together and for maintenance purpose that it makes it easier to build now connections because the next, um, next object is the transportation lane. And this lane, um, it's the connection between locations. And if you're looking now here at this example, we have a connection, for example, between Germany and the Netherlands. The zones are linked. That means the optimizer is allowed to find a way from shipping point one to port one or to the distribution center. So we tell the, the system, okay, this is linked. You can use this route at the end. You can also say, um, um, create lanes between zones, inside zones, so that you're allowed to drive from port one to distribution center. So you're building up here like a dynamic network for the optimizer or for the planning process to enable um, them to find the best route in an easy, uh, lean way. Um, building up this network is also up to your business needs. So you don't have to do it very complex. You can do it very easy, lean. Um, but you have to always to keep in mind, um, if you do it in a limited way, the optimizer has, has enough chances to really optimize at the end. So here it's always the question, what do you need for your business process? Do you want to optimize? Then you have to think about a very, um, you, have really, you have to take time on this network because this is the foundation for the planning. If you say it's not so important for, for me, you can make it very easy, very lean with just a few zones, few lanes at the end. On top on the lanes, which are mainly for the road transport, we have also so-called object um, schedule. So thinking about ocean air, here we have connections um, between a port and a port. And normally you have here like a schedule from a carrier. You have voyages and you have to book capacity on this voyage. And it's not possible to do this without this booking. And therefore we have this schedule in the SAP transportation management system, which is also not there in Elytra. We have this only in TM, which enables you to have this schedule like a, like a bus schedule, like uh, you know when, when you're driving with a bus, to reflect this in the SAP transportation management system and have a connection between a port and another port or also between um, an airport and a another airport at the end. And then the last, uh, no, not the last one. So um, we have the resources also. 
Resources are the reflection of capacities in TM. That means you have a normal truck and you know how much space it has. And then you can plan accordingly. You can say, okay, I can put 20 pallets on this, so I can plan with this and you can decide if the truck is fully utilized or not. So you can really have here like the opportunity to check if a truck is really utilized. Also here, you can create dummy resources. So there is no need to really do this. It's just an opportunity to, for you to reduce your cost and also have, have a check here on the utilization of a truck. And then at the end, we have the default route, which is a more static way to defining a way through the network. It's like a route um, which always um, which gives already like a predefined way through the network, which can be used every time because we want to fix this a little bit. Um, to fix the way which could should be done every time because maybe you have special rates on this at the end. And this is more or less the network. As I said, you can define it in a way which, um, which you need for your business process. Sometimes you need it more complex, sometimes not. It's up to you and your implementation project. And this is also already, we're coming to the end of this session. And I want to summarize what you learned in this session. So we talked in the beginning about the order management. So we can integrate with S4HANA core based on sales order, purchase order for more long-term planning. We can also integrate based on deliveries, which you know already from Elita, which is more an execution short-term planning. And the result, which so the starting objects in TM are the freight unit, which is used for, um, for the planning purpose, and the result documents like freight order, freight bookings, transportation units, which we talk more about in the next session. And you have different capabilities to plan in TM, like a manual planning, like an optimizer planning, a lot of different transactions so that you can define what you want for your business users. And which is important, you need master data for this. You need the master data from your S4HANA system, and you need a network which contains out of lanes, schedules, and so on to have a foundation um, for the planning process. If you want to learn more, we have some really nice blogs from the TM development architects, which I can really recommend to you, which are quite good about very special topics in the planning area. And we have some FAQ notes which provide you some help in the area of integration. Now we are at the end of the unit. Thanks for listening and see you in the next unit when we talk more about the business process and SAP transportation unit, uh, transportation management. Goodbye.